All right. Can you hear me now? No, not yet. Let's see. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you can hear? Okay. All right. Yep. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry about that. I, I just realized I forgot to plug in the mic. And uh, so I, you just saw me um, just going around the desk looking for the plug to, to um, for the mic. But we got the mic in. Let me move it out the way a little bit. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Huh? Oh, can oh, you hear me clearly? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we're about to start. Um, hopefully, there's a ton of people here. I, I, or, or even just two. I'll take that. Um, so I'm starting in Rebel, and this is going to be a little bit different. We are going to have uh, a reference to work from. I just wanted to open Rebel, and just to show you what it is that I go through. Uh, I, I have something that's preset the way that I like. So I have it the width, um, it's supposed to be 14 inches, but that's okay. I'll just leave it like that for now. DPI, no less than 300. And... Um, and then you know I got the option to choose a landscape or portrait here I already let me just you know you can choose your canvas like there's textures here that you can use I'm just gonna go with the simple uh, white uh, canvas but I'm going to also add some color which is what I did here so this is some these are things that I, I already have set into it because with the um, with the digital programs, I like to have things a certain way. I set them up, and I I, I vary depending on the project. But um, actually, I, I you know there, there's some things that I like that I have it preset so that I know I can go to it anytime. Then um, other than that, if I want to make any changes, I, I will. So I and I the reason why I didn't have the um, the reference image here yet was that I wanted to show you guys there's a you know there's a tab up here for window and uh, there's a, a, a you can bring up a window that says reference image and what I'll do is I'll go to a folder that I have and I'll just pick out an image and I'll drop it in here up in a minute should come up in a minute oh there we go okay I don't know why it took so long and with this I can you know I can I can go ahead and, and zoom in if I want to I can uh, I can open this up but then that won't leave me much room to draw so I want to leave this at a good size that way you guys can um, can see it and can use it as a reference yourself you know so this is the reference that we're going to be drawing from now with rebel there are a lot of brushes that, well let me put it this way there's not a lot of brushes that I have to choose from but within these selections there are a lot of presets like if you look here I have pencil selected right so if you go down to all the different pencils you can select you got pencils up here uh, 4H HB 2B I, I want to say excuse me because uh, I have allergies it's spring here in New York and um, the pollen is, is killing me but uh, it, it's not too bad but and uh, there's also uh, below the pencils is charcoal you can use charcoal there's um, this is stuff that I haven't tried yet beneath that there's dry media there's different textures that you can use. I haven't tried digital because I'm like, uh, if I'm using a program where I wanted to mimic uh, um, traditional media, there's no reason for me to try and make it look digital. That's not what I want to do. Uh, then we have here uh, brushes. And uh, you have the oil brush, the acrylic brush, the watercolor brush, which is neat. I want to use the oil brush today. But before I go ahead and do that, I just want to highlight some things about this program, which I think is really great. Um, and I'm not getting paid by Rebel to show you guys this. I'm just, uh, um, I just like the program. So, um, and if you're, by the way, if you don't have Rebel, 
that's fine. If you have a pencil and a paper, you can you can do the um, you can you can draw from the reference. Or if you have what you know you're using watercolors, or you don't have um, Rebel, you have some other program. You can use uh, Sketchbook Pro. You can use Photoshop. You could use uh, you don't have a, a you you don't draw on your computer. Maybe you draw on your tablet. You can use Procreate. Whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, I'm just showcasing Rebel because that's what I'm working with. But really, the you know we're here to draw from the reference. So I want you guys to go ahead and feel free to um, use whatever you want. Uh, so again, the, I, I just want to highlight some things about this program. I uh, you see these sliders over here. Therefore, the opacity and the amount of water that's included. Now, the the reason why that's important in a program like the Rebel, let me just choose a color here, uh, because when you use the watercolor, and then you know, then again, you have all these selects. You can have watercolor, you have gouache, you have sumi inks, uh, and spatters. Some I don't really use, um, but I guess I can. It just depends. Uh, but here. Uh, let me do round two, right? A lot of water, selected my color, and there. Now, one of the things that you'll see in a minute, well, there we go, is that it drips, which is really cool. It acts, and now I can stop the dripping by pressing this right here. There's a, a, these little wavy lines over on the right by the layer uh, um, layer palette over here the, or I can wet the, pa the, the, the layer entirely um, this I can pause like if I wanted to um, for, for the dripping just to, to kind of slow down let me select another color and I just wanted to uh, so it's not dripping at all right now it's paused but I unpause it and then you'll see it'll start to drip and uh, blend in with the color that's on there already. You know, so it's kind of neat. And you know, the, you can control the tilt. Um, say you're not too happy by by some of the blend, by some of uh, the way it it it, uh, it drip down here. You can also select a. a lessen the opacity on this you can also select this blend tool this is sometimes you, you know one of the things I, I don't like about digital and I, one of the things I prefer traditional is that um, you know, there's there's too many things to tinker with in digital. I like digital. Don't get me wrong. I think I, but um, I'm used to drawing traditional. So you know, that's one of the reasons why. Let me clear this layer. One of the reasons why I love uh, I love different brushes like that that for me are straightforward. Like I love the oil brush because for me it's straightforward. It's an oil brush. Uh, I can um, it, it, it does it mimics oil well let me select a color over here so it mimics oil well and um, and uh, which is my question there's not too much tinkering I have to do besides controlling the sliders and selecting a brush that I like here's an example This is okay. You see how I don't know if you can see it, but there you go. This you can see it better. It's a little lighter. You can see how you get that that impasto look, like the thick paint kind of look. And I can increase that. I can go here in the visual settings right and I can increase the impossible depth if I want to you know so that you have more of that that paint like look 
to the um, to, 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 to the, the colors and I can increase the gloss there that's that's the most I can get from a slider from 1 through 10 and uh, but I, I just just to keep my distractions low while I'm working I like to keep it at like five or six and just leave it there so that I can get a little bit of it and I can get an idea of where it's going then at the end I can when I'm done with the painting I can play with those sliders and see if uh, if uh, you know if I, I, I find something that I like in the final image so that being said uh, there's also with the, 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 the thick paint up there there's thin paint down here and I can select something from here Yes. Uh, so there we go. Oh, okay. Well, um, Kumo is with us today. He hey. asks, he asks, how are we? Okay. Uh huh. And uh, he also says that he's using Procreate. Cool. Procreate is a great program. I don't have Procreate because I don't have a tablet. But um, but if I had that, that would be something that I would I would uh, um, definitely use. Um, Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and so this one of the ways I, I start painting is I I, um, I start with a layer where I lower the opacity just a bit. Okay, um, and so I start. Well, the first thing you do is really you start blocking in. You start blocking in where you want the head to go. I, I, I almost started sounding like Bob Ross. Maybe okay. a happy little head lives here. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have Dark Mora. Uh huh. One. Uh, he sends an emoji. Oh. Yeah, and he says it looks like real painting. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? That's that's one of the things I like about this program. I wish they would pay me to promote it because I definitely would, but I, I you know, I say what I do anyway because it's it's a great program. Um, and, and thank you. Uh, I just also want to say, just ways you can uh, support this channel. You can see um, down on the the chats there. There's a uh, um, there there are two buttons down there. There's one for super chat if you want to leave a, a, a donation. And as well as uh, you know, have your 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 comment highlighted and so forth. It's just great as far as uh, being able to support what what we're trying to do, in in building up this channel and and, and uh, um, creating better and better videos, uh, as well as you know, just exploring art and sharing it with everyone. And uh, okay, so um, so there's there's that and there's the super emojis I'm not exactly too sure about the super emojis but it's there as an option to um, you know uh, but uh, yeah so if you wanted to help support us that's a great way of doing it now let me go ahead and make a bigger brush here just so I can cover more ground I I'm not worried about the drawing or anything right now except that I'm just trying to place where the big big stuff goes you know this is um, and a lot of it you know is is going to be wrong you know painting is, is um, painting and drawing a lot of times is uh, your first your, your first indications are going to be your best guess they're going to be about Placing your best guess, and then the rest of the time is going to be about making corrections. So I'm just trying to figure out where everything goes, and then afterwards, I'll fix it. I'll make the little tweaks and everything that'll bring everything together. But um, especially important now is thinking about 
the big areas and not the little details because what happens what what can be kind of debilitating about uh, uh, paint about learning to paint is that you know you you worry about getting a likeness you worry about the details to you know if I can can I draw this eye right or let me not lose this little detail I have here and um, that's a distraction the first thing to do is just to get to, to, to think about it in simple terms big planes uh, lights and darks and, and, and the big masses of light and dark and then you bring that down to you know you, you start whittling it down to the little details it's like taking uh, a clay or, or taking a block of wood and when you whittle away at it it's a block of wood when you start so it doesn't look pretty you know in terms of the finished product which you want to get but as you will as you whittle it down you get away from the from those big things to the tiny 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 things so that you find your way there you don't start at the tiny you start at the big and you get to the tiny bit more red so and then the other thing oh I think this is oh, okay so what I'm doing now is trying to find a kind of middle color middle value of journal color for everything something that um, that you see all around so she's got a, a kind of reddish pinkish color see I'm not worried about like over here that all this detail over here with the hair and stuff like that because I can always paint that back in later what I'm w worried about is more like this big area like how do I get this to look like one one block of, um, of something first then I'll come back in and start picking out the little details. How long have you been using about? Ooh, oh wow for years now for oh for years, years now okay. yeah since I since I I, um, I found out about it um, I used to use a different program I forgot the name of it now but um, oh, art rage I used to use art rage but the problem with art rage for me was that there's too many things to tinker with you know I, I, I like something that's straightforward and that I don't have to, you know, I don't have to be so, so uh, involved with the technical aspects of it, like oh, okay. as far as the, the computer is concerned. Mm, okay. So Rebel is a much simpler program. Much simpler, much simpler to use. One of the things is when I started making uh, videos about digital art, mm -hmm. um, I made videos that featured programs that were um, that, that didn't cost too much you know that, that were didn't cost too much and um, and they weren't a big learning curve they weren't hard to use you okay. know okay okay well Kumar had, had uh, I guess, done, is it a super chat? Is this what a super chat looks like? Yes, that's a super chat. Yeah. He said, loving these live streams. Oh, thank you, Kumar. Yeah. Thank you for the, um, for the super chat, too. And um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, okay. If you're not mistaken, why? Um, no, that um, the super chats um, uh, come with a, a donation or 
something like yes, that? Yes, they do. Oh, okay. Well, Kumar, thank you so much. Okay. So one of the things that I can start doing now is that, you know, there's just a little bit of color in here. Or if you want to call it paint, you can call it paint. I don't know what they call it. It's digital. But there's a little bit of color to the design. And what I can start doing is that they have a blend brush right here. Now there's two brushes that you can use to blend. You can use the one that's here. I don't like to use that one. I used to use that one, but they added one here. And the reason why this one is so good is that it picks up the properties of the brush that you're using. So say if I switch to another brush, uh, let me do rough dry. Just hopefully you'll be able to see something, right? So, and you see how it the, the, the image looks kind of flat right now, but because I'm using the blender with this brush, you know, all of a sudden it starts picking up texture. You don't see it as much there. You'll probably see it here. It, it picks up texture. And um, so you can blend, and it already, even though you didn't put the impasto in, it already starts building that impasto. Okay. So, but it's too early to get there yet. Uh, let me go back to the Filbert's brush. And I just want to move paint around. And fix the shapes. Just a bit. I am at, at this time I'm not trying to be too exacting even with the color I can change the color as I go along Well, I wanted to say something to Kumar. Kumar, by the way, uh, the family, our family, uh, had received their second vaccination. So, uh, yeah, you know, we're still listening to um, news about what's going on in India, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah we hope you're okay. Yes. So you see I can just move the paint around and use that use the blending brush to draw as well. Now this the, you don't want to make your your painting entirely with the blending. I I uh, well for me one of the things that, that, that's good about um, knowing traditional media is that you have an idea of what you want the, 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 the painting to look like if you're doing an oil painting or watercolor. That as long as the, the brushes here are supposed to mimic traditional media, then you have to have a good idea of the ends that you're trying to get to. What do you, what do you want the final image 
to look like. So I, I kind of like it to look, you know, like what I like to paint. You know, uh, I like it to look, you know, the, 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 the I like the impasto look. I like the brush strokes. I like the, you know, the brush strokes showing and, and so forth. And so that's the that's what I want as my end result. Right now, I'm not at that stage yet. Right now, I'm more at the stage where I'm trying to organize everything here. Okay, well, just picking up on our conversation that uh, I had uh, earlier with Kuma. He says um, things are really bad there in India, but that he yeah. got vaccinated. So glad to hear that, Kuma. You know, he's in the capital, but it's bad in the villages and small towns where he's from. But we're glad to hear you got vaccinated. Yeah. You know what? I, I see the details. It's coming. You know, it's uh, amazing how fast you are able to work on the details. Yeah, I think I'm yeah. working too fast. You know. Oh, really? You think so? Yeah. You know, the, the one of the things that's stifling, especially when you're doing things that are live, is that you, you, you're, um, you, you want to hurry up to get it to look like it should. Oh. And, and, um, and I'm not... You know, which is which is bad for the painting because I'm not. It takes time. It doesn't. You know, it doesn't happen right away. Okay. Okay. So, what I usually do is I go ahead. I, I work it to a point like this. I, I'm. You know, um, I might work it a little bit more, but this is good enough. And so what I do is I, I open another layer. I go down here, select new layer, and so I have a new layer over here. And I will lower the opacity on that layer. And lowering the opacity means I can continue to work on here and make changes. This time I can make more subtle changes. Uh, um, I can make changes to the color. For instance, if this is these these are a lot of warm colors on here right now, except for maybe this this grayish kind of purplish color down here. Uh, but if I wanted to make it cooler, say I wanted to add a little bit more blue, I can because I lowered the opacity. Now I, this is not something that I want in here, but just just as as uh, to show, I can. Okay, that's a little too big for me. Let me. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me select round. Right. And let me do something here. Say I wanted to make this a little. See? There's just that, that hint of blue right there. And when I when I start putting in these highlights, these highlights are just, just a tinge of blue. Now, it's too soon to put all this stuff in just yet. Maybe an indication of, the, uh, of where the eye, but that, that's, that, that's also too soon. So I'm going to go back and select here. What is this? Uh, oh, paint and mix. Okay. Let me just see. See, all these different brushes here are different things. This is, I, I, I have dirty brush selected. Dirty brush means that it will continue to pick up on the last color you worked over and kind of um, kind of mix. So it will continue to do that. I don't want to work with a dirty brush. I, I, uh, I took that off. So I got, let me paint and mix. Either one of these two brushes are fine. So. Okay. Well, come on. He said he bought. Uh, I bought my Windsor and Newton gouache last week. Cool. And he says he don't think he could go back to any media again. Oh, why? Wow. You enjoying the gouache? 
Okay. Is that what you mean? I know it, it's a great medium. So, with that, with this, um, he says yes. Ah, cool. With this uh, layer, with the the, 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 the the opacity turned down, you know, it's easier for me to work and to um, build it up kind of subtly, not, you know, like, I, I you know, you, you kind of, sneaking up on the details you just work in things uh, um, tweaking them till it gets right till it looks right and so what I'll do is that I'll work this layer until you know until I'm satisfied with it then because I don't you know in a program like like rebel it uses a lot of your CPU power okay so it, it's better before it was it was it actually was more difficult to work on in the earlier versions but in this version, they, they, they sped it up. So in the latest version, it, it, it's like it's like night and day. It, it is so great. I, I, I wondered how I struggled with it before because it was so hard to work with sometimes, especially when you're making videos on it on the subject um, because, you know, it, it just took so much out of your computer and then you had, you had the, the, the rebel running and then at the same time, you had um, you had you know the, the the software you used to record the video running, and it just it just ate up the computer. So what's cool about the newer version is that that problem is is virtually gone, you know, and um, and, and it's not eating up the computer. I can I can record safely while using it without worrying about. Uh, Without worrying about is you know uh, is you know am I going to be able to finish this because uh, because it's so difficult to work with? Was that due to the uh, better technology? Or? Yeah, yeah, okay. because it, it they 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 uh, they changed the program so that it worked better and uh, um, it didn't need it didn't use up the computer memory like it did before. Oh, okay. um, so it was better to work with. So um, you know, and, and I lost my chair. Not not because of you. I just I just as I kept talking about the program, I, I lost my chain of thought. Oh, I'm sorry. I, and <laughs> while you're trying to remember, I noticed that you earlier had mentioned that you had put a tinge of blue in it. Is it because that's the color you see when you look at the reference material? Like the the way the light is shown on her forehead at that point? Or? Yeah, yeah. I okay. see a little bit I see a little bit of blue in there to uh -huh. me. Or or, you know, just, just it's a little bit cooler down here. Like right under the cheek. Right under the cheek and that, that, that right by the jaw. It's a little bit cooler. So I would just start getting cooler. I wouldn't go totally blue or anything like that. But I'd start hinting at something that's a cooler color, like a blue or a purple. You know, a very, very light purple. Same thing with the um, with the upper lip here, just the, the space between the nose and the lip, uh -huh. the mouth area, right. the mustache area. You know, you see on, on, her, on her right side here, where the mm -hmm. shadow is, uh -huh. You see it just a bit cooler. It's not red like it is over here on the cheeks. Oh, okay. You know, it's just a bit cooler. You see it here under the chin, just a little bit cooler. And, you know, sometimes for the painting's sake, like I'm not copying a photograph. I'm using the photo as a reference. Right. So for the painting's sake, I might exaggerate some of the things I see to emphasize those things more uh -huh. if I believe it helps the painting. Okay. Because I'm not making a photo... I'm not copying the photo. I'm using the photo as a reference and using choosing the best parts of the photos to to um, to, to 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 paint or to tell the story of what it is that I saw. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Kuma X, which stylus do you use? 
Um, well, here's the thing. I, I When I bought this monitor that I'm using right now, I, I had a Cintiq, right? And um, But it was very small. And I wanted to get... I wanted to get something that was that was bigger, right? So I bought, I, I, I researched online, and I found this uh, this uh, Cintiq knockoff that was called uh, uh, Monoprice. And you know, I researched, I looked, I made sure that I was getting my money's worth. And this was something like this was, I guess. Like something like 10 years ago I, I've had this monitor for, for I think that long and I never looked back it was great now unfortunately they don't make this monitor anymore and the pen uh, the reason why I'm saying that the pen the pen comes with the monitor so it's it's uh, I, I don't have any special pen or any special stylus this is just what came with the monitor um, and um, but if I had to do it again, I would do the same thing. Like, my, my dream would be to get um, a larger monitor. I, I think this is 21 inch. I'm not sure if it's bigger than 21, um, but it's a large. It's a it's a pretty big, decent sized monitor. But I would go even bigger um, if I could, because you know, just the, the more space you have, the easier it is. I, I would just like that amount of, you know, that, that type, that, that ability to work bigger. But, you know, if you look at the price of, uh, of, uh, and, and of, uh, uh, Cintiq, they are just, they are just expensive. And if you can afford it, great. No problem. But I, I think that it's just beyond what a lot of people can't afford and uh, so you know and it's possible they don't have to corner the market it's possible to find something decent and affordable you know which is what I was looking for Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and merge this these two layers. There you go. Then open up another layer on top of that and uh, continue to paint. notice you had said you are merging the layers is that because of waiting for a drying effect since you're using no the no, no no uh -huh. what I merge the layers for is um because you know it's digital art so there's no really there's no drying you uh -huh. know but so it's stimulating what you would use oh if you're doing no no paint. that that's for the watercolor oh that's for the okay. watercolor you're right about that that's for the watercolor but for um, oil paints, it's a little bit different because there's no drying. You don't have to worry about the paint dripping or anything like that. It's not. It, it, you don't have to worry about drying time. What um, what happens is that, and I, I use this for you know I use I do the same thing if I'm working in in sketchbook mm -hmm. or if I'm working in in Photoshop. 
you know, um, I, I would do the same thing. It's like I would take the layer to to a certain degree, and when what what this what um, what painting like this does for me is that uh, it's there's a method of painting called glazing, where you have like a, a dry uh, uh, the the paint surface is dry, like mm -hmm. so you say you paint. And then mm -hmm. you come back the next day, and the paint is dry. So on top, you don't, you know, you don't want to, you you want to tweak everything, but you don't want to make big changes. You want to make subtle changes. Uh -huh. You start glazing. Oh. That means that you know you use um, in oil paint. You use the paint with a with a lot of medium, or you know, and you do like a wash over the thing so that you're making subtle changes. And that's what that's what the um, that's what the the uh, which one are layers the layers right there okay. you go there you go mm -hmm. that's what the layers uh, helps me to to, to okay. achieve okay okay, okay let me because I want to blend some of this stuff in so I'm going to merge the layers again We have a comment from C. Warden. He said, Happy Saturday from Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, happy Saturday to you, too. Yeah. Mm I'm wondering, how's the weather in North Carolina? I think uh, the southern states has been experiencing 80 degrees and, and, and better. I have family that live in South Carolina, so that's what I've been hearing. Okay, Mr. Vic, he's, from, he's saying hello um, from, what's this, Zacat? Mexico. Oh, okay. Mexico. Yeah, cool. Zacatecas, Zacatecas, Mexico. Let me see. I just want to see. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce that word. <laughs> and I think that that is more of a uh, what you might call it. I think that has less Spanish in it. Now I know Spanish but I think that has less Spanish and more Indian. Oh, uh, okay. Or more Native American. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> he said close but no cigar. <laughs> <laughs> Attempt to say it again. Mr. No, Vick. I would. I wouldn't even Did you bother. Do it? No, I, I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm Latino, and I wouldn't even bother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I okay. mean, 
I, I can definitely look it up. I'm curious enough to look it up how you pronounce that. Uh -huh. <laughs> we, we, we were in Mexico long ago. Okay. Right? Say again now? I we said, were we, here. Yeah, we were in Mexico a long time ago. Yeah. What, more than 20 some years ago? Yeah, that was our, that was our honeymoon. Yeah. Okay. We'll see Warden. Uh, uh, talking about the weather in North Carolina, I was okay. asking about the weather in North Carolina, and um, uh, they mentioned that the weather is up and down there, 72 today, but it was uh, freezing two days prior. Wow. Well, you know what? That depends on what you call freezing, because <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're from New York, and my God, freezing would be 30, 40, you know, and um, let's see, I think the latter part of April, um, um, it was, you know, it was dipping down, you know, to the 40s and up to the 60s. It was a little crazy for a little while, so. Yeah, I, I think the further you go up north, and you start going up north to Canada, or you go to these countries which are, um, you know, fur further up north, they'll think like 30s and 40s is nothing. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. They'll call you weak. <laughs> <laughs> you can't take it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Mr. Vic uh, chimes in again, the one from Mexico. We okay. said we, we weren't going to try to uh, pronounce that town. He said it took him a while to. Uh, his wife is from uh, Mexico. Okay. And, he, and he's from Connecticut. Ah, okay. so you, you're closer to us. Yeah, the tri state area. That's what we call the tri state uh, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Yeah, and my, my, I had a uh, mm -hmm. few, uh, some aunts and uncles in Colchester. Uh -huh. I think it was Colchester in Connecticut. Okay. Okay, so um, let's see. Uh, yeah, Sea Warden. Okay, North Carolina. It was in the low sixties here last week. Storm every night almost. Yeah, you know what? I have a relative from South Carolina, and she was telling me it was um, raining for a couple of nights. You know, for a little while. Uh, okay. And you know, you're just one state away, North Carolina and then South Carolina, if you're traveling um, north going south. Uh, yeah, so, okay. Kumar, he said, wow, look at the temperature. He said, it's 104 in India. Wow. Wow, okay, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what to say behind that one, boy. That is some hot weather. Yeah. That is hot weather. <laughs> like I said, depends on where you're from. Okay. And uh, Mr. Vic said 50s is t-shirt weather back home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't know. I need a light jacket. I'll be honest with you, Mr. Vic. <laughs> oh, okay. He said, uh, he, okay, he has an emoji, you know. Mr. Okay, Vic cool. has been following with some emojis uh, back here. Uh, so he said he follows for the art and the accent. Really, you know what? I can't, people talk about people in New York having an accent. And um, I, I don't know, maybe it's just that I'm so used to it. I, I can't pick up any accent, especially um, people that live in Brooklyn. Brooklyn, if for anybody that don't know, Brooklyn is one of the boroughs in the city of New York. New York has five boroughs. And um, we're in the borough of the Bronx. And there's the borough of Brooklyn. And people comment about it, so. Yeah, there's people, yeah. Uh, Brooklyn has been known for that. Uh, and Queens too. The okay. Bronx has an accent, it just depends. See, we're, we're used to talking the way that we do, and we don't realize that people pick up, you know, pick up that our accents are different. 
mm-hmm. you know, so, um, you know, New York accent, whatever. I don't know what that is. I don't know even if there is still a New York accent. But, um, you know, they used to make fun of Brooklyn accents, uh, what you might call it, in, in the movies. You yeah. Know, I live on Toity Toyed and Toyed by the Big Tree. Mm-hmm. You know, stuff like that. Um, but, uh, but I think it's been a while since anybody actually talked like that. Okay. Well, Mr. Vic says, if you live in the South, you will miss that and a good pizza. Yeah. And you know what? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I heard from my, uh, I have a brother who, uh, who's been in the armed forces since, since he was 16. And he's traveled mm-hmm. around the world. And he said one of the things that even when he's in the United States, that when he's in another state, says there's a, uh, um, you miss New York pizza. Mm-hmm. He said th- he said you don't get that anywhere else. Now mm-hmm. I, I rarely traveled outside of um, New York for any long period of time. I mean I have traveled, but for any long period of time, I, I, I haven't been outside New York City where I would you know where I would start to miss things like that you know I, I didn't even know to look for it because you know I was going to be home at some point mm-hmm. so okay yeah. okay all right well have Lata says I okay hi. Th- thank you for watching thank you for being with us today uh-huh okay so, uh, Gamer says hi as well. Hey, Gamer. Uh-huh. Okay, one of the things that I could do here now is that, um, see that the top of her head is really too high up here and I can't get into anything if I want to make any changes up there. So I'm going to just move it down a little bit just a tad and move it over and just hit OK and that's something that you can't do in traditional art uh-huh. okay. yeah. so uh, let me open up another layer and uh, what do I need to do here okay and see what that takes mm. sometimes I don't know exactly what I'm going to get from these brushes like they had the names of brushes that um, that I remember buying when I paint when and I, I still paint in oils but not as much as I would like to um, but you know brushes even if I bought a brush for gouache they would still have some of these names like filbert flat round fan there's a wash brush, there's a liner brush, uh, and uh, bristle brushes, a round bristle brush that's particularly an oil brush, you know, so, um, you know, these are, these are names that I would know. So, but I, you know, I don't know what it's going to do in its digital form all the time. Well, maybe you want to say again what program you're using, Vicky. Oh, sh- Mr. Vic is asking. Sure, sure. I'm using Rebel. Rebel is a software um, that, uh, you know, I I wish they would pay me, but they don't pay me to promote their software. But uh, I like it. It it is uh, um, it's Windows or Mac, and uh, unfortunately, there's no tablet version that it would be neat if there was. Um, But I like it. It's not too expensive, and what it does is it mimics traditional media very well like uh, oil paints and stuff like that let me just show you once again I I showed this in the beginning where if say you know I have this painting as it is right now now I've been using the uh, thin paint but I can go ahead and change the impasto depth on this and make it look thicker 
uh, it, and you, you see it a little bit here not as much as later on I'll be um, well let me let me see if I say if I used uh, rough oil right and I use the blender now the blender has no color but what it will do is because it will take the properties of the brush I selected and I can oh let me lower the merge this now and you can see it start building up uh, in pasta there so you can see the paint getting thick you know so it'll look like I painted with thick brush strokes you know and um, ultimately that's the look that I want to get when I'm done with this but I'm, I'm not there yet I'm just uh, um, what do you might call it I am just building this 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 painting up to, to, to get to that point mm -hmm. you know but rebel does that rebel mimics traditional media you got oil brush acrylic brush watercolor brush pastel brush you have pencils you have inks um, and the last two is a um, marker and um, this is these, a marker and uh, is this a airbrush and um, which are those two I use the least but um, everything else I, I, I uh, use definitely use a lot more of uh, well Kumar <laughs> yeah he's being funny he said he was doing digital art so much that when he was painting and made a mistake he was looking for the undo button <laughs> That that's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some people forget that we we do have an undo button. It's called an eraser. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, But it, it definitely does not work as good as, as an undo button. Yeah. You know. <laughs> At least not to get rid of everything. The painting is coming out well. You can see it on the screen, okay. you know, from where I'm looking. Yeah. I, you know, one of the one of the advantages of doing the digital art is it's it's much easier to record than traditional. Oh, okay. You see, as I as I keep going, I'm probably going to merge these a lot sooner, just because I'm making more and more. Um, as I go along, the changes become more and more subtle.
Okay. Well, I see uh, we have uh, a fan, one of our fans, uh -huh. uh, and it's uh, just the number one. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. He, uh, they said with all those uh, fancy brushes, uh, you almost like have a ghost painter. A ghost painter. Yeah. Okay, I see how you're separating the hair. Uh -huh. So, you know, on on the model's right side. Uh -huh. Yeah, how you distinguish that little part down there. One of the things is that with the um, you definitely have to keep in mind when the brushes are not behaving the way you would want to you have to check the sliders you know is it loading too much paint you know this is this is simpler than than uh, than the watercolor brush the watercolor brush has more tweaks to it um, which is probably why I like using this brush um, more but the reason why is because I, I want to be able to concentrate on the drawing and the painting and less about um, the technology of the program, you know, just to get it to look a certain way. Um, and that's just, that's just a result of um, me uh, coming from traditional media and knowing what I want the image or the, you know, the, 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 the um, knowing what effect I want to get, especially as it relates to traditional media. going to start paying more attention to more specific things. Was there any reason why you picked this particular reference? Yes, what? yes. Uh, um, the reason why I picked this particular one, because as you know, uh, I was working on that drawing um, uh, using a different uh, using a different photo reference, but it's of the same model. And uh, since I was working on that drawing, I figured let me let me go ahead because I'm, I'm familiar with the, um, 
with the, the model already in terms of the image you know let me go ahead and continue to use maybe just you know maybe a, a, another another photo of the same model but still oh okay saying wow you know I'm looking at the, um, the um, paintings that you're doing and um, it's really coming alive and uh, yeah it's really good oh, thank you See now that this uh, painting, you know, how it's coming along from the start to where I am now, is uh, a, a lot of tweaking, a lot of making corrections to, like I said in the beginning, uh, your first marks, the first things that you put down, because they, I'm going to be as precise as I can with those first um, few uh, marks, but. Um, knowing that I'm going to make a lot of corrections as I go along and as the painting develops. a lot of this one of the things I do appreciate about um, working digitally like this is that um, you know that the, it's a lot of uh, pushing pushing the color around as if I would push paint around and there's a, this analogy when you're working with paint that you think like a sculptor you know with clay that a sculptor um, add, you know he subtracts from the clay then he adds, then he takes away, then he shapes the clay, and so forth. So that's part of what I'm doing is that, you know, I add, I, 
I, I make the drawing, I, I, I uh, put the color in, I, I, I uh, make some corrections and take some things out, then I come back in and, and uh, add some more, um, some more information, you know, and I keep making the changes till I get to a point where I can I can be happy with the final image. But it's a whole lot of um, it's it's a whole lot of you know putting things down and, and making corrections and so forth. Like I said, with uh, with doing stuff live, you know, there's always this this feeling like, oh, you know, you gotta rush to make sure that it doesn't look bad because then everybody's gonna think that it's horrible and you know, and that I, I I can't draw, I can't, you know, all of that downward slide thing. But um, it's not it's not an unusual thing to go through even when you're painting for yourself uh, the illustrator Norman Rockwell used to say that um, there's a stage that his paintings get to which he called the oh my god it's awful stage Uh, Norman Rockwell was never satisfied with his art. And he never was. He never was. And you know what? For um, for artists, that 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 remains true. Where you know, th there's never a point you reach where you say, "Oh, okay, I, I've made the greatest master or my greatest master." You know, you 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 always keep going to improve. Um, and you know, th there's a there's a I was watching this video on YouTube uh, by Stefan Bauman, uh -huh. and he talked about uh, perfectionism. And I, I mean, I don't want to go over, you know, what he, you know, what he used his video or everything he said on his video. But there, there is that that um, that part in every, and I, I guess, in no matter what you do, whether you're a painter. You're a musician, you're you know, whatever you do, where you 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 know you you strive to do to the best of your ability, and you you have you set a standard or a goal for yourself that you you know you you want to be. No matter where you are, you want to be better than where you are. Okay. Well, Rodica says hello. Hi. And uh, Mr. Vic stills with us. Okay. He was saying, um, it sounds like all my drawings. I think when we were talking about Norman Rockwell wanting to, uh, was never satisfied oh. with his work. He said, that sounds like all my drawings. <laughs> uh, yeah, it sounds like all of mine's too. <laughs> you know, my wife will attest. I, I, um, there are a lot of times where I'm just unhappy with uh, with progress. You know that I, I always. You know that there's always something more I could have done, and even when I've done something that I I can honestly say that, well, this is the best. You know, this is probably the best that we can hope for. Is just to say, this is the best that I can do. With um, with what I know right now, N knowing that you know what, as you go on, you're going to get even better, and that you know, in a few days, you're going to look at what you did and say, "Oh man, this is terrible." Mm -hmm. um, that might be too much of a thing. I, I don't know, but I, I do know that that is just a specific way I feel when it comes to wanting to improve and wanting to be better. At what it is that I do. Okay, so let me add another layer and 
decrease the opacity of the layer. trying to get to lighter colors than what I've been using so far. Let me get away from the thin paint and let me see what I guess I'll use a flat bristle. And now a little bit more of the brush stroke is going to start to show up. You know, I was um, sitting here wondering what are some of the programs do uh, our other, you know, fans uh, like to use when they do digital art. Mm -hmm. So um, if you want to chime in, that would be great. Um, I know uh, Kumar uses Procreate. Uh, you know, what other program? What other programs do you use? That would be uh, nice to know. 
Or if you don't use uh, digital media, say if you use... Uh, oh, that's right, because some are just right. uh, painting or, or drawing. Yeah. But this is a good, you know, instructional, you know, instruction video of um, telling people, you know, how to use, you know, digital art, especially if someone is nervous about it. I don't know at if at this point, you know, uh, they would be uh, nervous using digital art. Oh. oh. Let's see, Mr. Victor. He says he used Clip Studio. Oh, okay. Oh, I know the pro I I had that program as well. Oh, okay. You do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Clip Studio. Okay. So uh, we got Procreate and Clip Studio. You know, I see people use a a wide range of um, of programs. Mm -hmm. yes. That's good. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't hear um, sketchbook. Sketchbook it used to be Sketchbook Pro because it's it's a great program, but it, it's and it used to cost money, but it's free now. Oh, okay. That's probably because they had um, uh, they have some other program yeah. that's premiere or yeah, they they yeah. They, they do other um, other programs as well. Okay. Okay. Pen, pencil, and stretch pad. Sketch pad. Oh, okay. Okay. Sketch pad. Okay. Okay, Mr. Vic, we got you. So just just as an aside, um, does the um, does the reference come up pretty good on the screen? Does the reference? Yeah, yeah, it does. It's it's good, clear. Good enough to work from. Uh, yeah, I would say, you know. Okay. Yeah. Because in the future, you know, I I'll, I know, I'll be doing more of a. Okay. More of a. Uh, digital so I just want to make sure everybody has something good enough to work from oh, okay yeah it does okay Rodica want to know um, sir which brush do you use most of the time most of the time I use the brush that I'm doing I'm using now I, I love the oil brush a lot and I also use the pencil because um, I, I, I like the pencil in, in, uh, in Rebel um you know it's it's uh simple and straightforward and, and and like the rest of it i don't think it it um does as good of a job as far as um imitating digital media in the way that these other brushes do but in a way the pencil is less obvious you know um but it does look and f look a lot like a um, an actual pencil drawing, you know. I, I there are other things that I would love to use, uh, but again, if you're asking me what I what which brush I like to use the most, I I, I like using this brush the most. Okay. Okay, so my wife is informing me that I've been going on. We started at 3 and it's, it's 4.24. So I'm just going to go on a little bit more. And then, uh, then I'm going to call an end to this. But uh, it's been fun. And, and you know what? I want to thank everyone for, um, for participating and for the questions and all of that. It is very much appreciated. And if you sent an emoji or a super chat and to support this uh, um, 
this uh, what we're doing here so that we can continue to uh, do more videos like this and, and do even better ones as, as, as we go along and, and learn more about uh, about making videos you know uh, we will um, we just appreciate the, the, the support but I definitely appreciate all all of the um, all of your comments yeah uh, Mr. Vick says he's a professional scribble scribbler and, well, okay and uh, this started at the start of the pandemic oh, okay. and uh, he started practicing more he started watching videos buying, that's, that's buy, great Go yeah ahead. buying art books you know things like that that is great You know, it, it, I mean, it's it's great as far as um, being able to have that to do. Um, I know that being in the middle of this pandemic is no fun at all. You know. Yeah, I think the pandemic for a lot of people have brought out uh, a lot of talents. You know, people uh, got creative. Uh -huh. You know. And, um, you know, it just brought out a lot of different talents and different people, whatever that might be. Yeah. Right. Okay. Oops. Too much of a blob there. Uh, I'm pushing stuff around right now. Um, to build up the, you know, the, this impasto. Still, let's see, I can use this. Ah, jeez, I gotta check these sliders when I do this. This is a little bit too thick up here. of everything. Alright, I'm trying to work quick here and I shouldn't be doing that. Let's see. I'm working a little quick here and um, 
I'm not sure all these things are are correct but I'm realizing I'm coming to the end of uh, of the stream so I want to get a few things down before we end up Merge the, the layers. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So again, that that's. Uh, That's about all the time we have. Let me just do a quick. Well, Mr. Vic wants to know, do you have videos of, let's see, do you have videos of, um, where you recommend art books? Um, I don't know if I have a video of that. I, if, um, uh, you know what, um, I can definitely, because I collect art books, I've been doing uh, collecting art books since I was in high school and uh, so I have a collection of stuff it just depends on um, what it is that you're looking for you know I have books on my favorite artists I have some books in regards to uh, drawing and painting uh, you know like the Loomis books the Bridgman books you know Bridgman was a um, was an anatomy teacher and he was one of uh, Norman Rockwell's uh, instructors at uh, the Art Students League in New York City uh, when uh, Rockwell lived in I think in New Rochelle or no he lived in another part of the city um, I don't know exactly I know he moved to New Rochelle but um, but you know he was in New York City when he was younger and as a student he studied with George Bridgman uh, he studied anatomy with George Bridgman and that was one of his instructors at the league um, so yeah I, I mean I have books by artists like that artists that you know instructional booklets uh, and, uh, so if that's the thing that you're looking for I, I definitely would recommend as a place to start um, they, they just uh, recently, uh, um, by recently I meant, I mean like in the past few years, re-released a lot of the old uh, um, uh, Loomis books, which were very popular. Loomis was a, a, a really great illustrator back in the day, was a... a one of uh, Norman Rockwell's top competitors, you know, um, and he did a series of books on drawing, uh, and uh, and just give me a minute and I will show you one such book, and, uh, and let me just it is right behind me. This is, uh, does this come up on the screen? Uh, let me see if it does. There's a bit of a delay. So, okay, um, just put it up a little. Yeah. Yes. Okay. This is the Loomis book. This is Drawing the Head and Hands. It's a great book. Um, something of more of, uh, something more of, a. Uh, um, advance would be this um, 
a classical drawing atelier by Juliet Aristides. Um, so, but you know, there, there are a lot of such books. Um, these are two of the best books you can buy. These are some of my other books back here. I have books on Dean Cornwell, Harry Anderson, Norman Rockwell, Max Ginsburg, who taught at Art, Art and Design and um, School of Visual Arts, J.C. Leyendecker, Rembrandt, I mean a lot of Sargent, Soroya, a lot of people who have influenced me over the years. Um, so anyway, with that, I want to say that um, uh, as far as this live stream, let me let me just do one more thing. Okay. Well, Mr. Vic said thank you and have a great day. Oh. Gracias. I understand that. <laughs> and um, he said, cool. Uh, I guess some of the books you have pointed out is on Amazon. Yes. So. Yes. Definitely. And so here I, I um, just uh, the visual settings here just underneath uh, where you have the in the in the layer layer palette here on the lower right so I click the visual settings right here and um, I play around with the the depth of the impact I can get it all the way down and it still looks good that way or I can bring it up a little bit more I can bring up also the gloss or bring the gloss down so I think I think where I had it was pretty good so um, so yeah, so there, there's uh, Rebel. Now, um, listen, if you guys have any suggestions, uh, as far as, I, I don't, I, I mean, I have a lot of uh, digital programs. I don't have all of them, though. Like, I don't have Procreate, and that would be more on a, on a tablet, and not on my computer. But um, I have, you know, Sketchbook, uh, Photoshop, um, uh, Clip Studio, which was mentioned before. I, I haven't used Clip Studio a lot. So some of these, you know, uh, even though I have them on my computer, would be like an exploration for me. I, I have ArtRage, but I haven't used ArtRage because I believe that, for me, uh, Rebel was much better at, at um, you know, at using uh, software that looked like traditional media. So, but if you have any suggestions, just put it in the comments or uh, put it in the comments below the video and uh, um, also uh, by way of supporting this channel if you would like there's I have a patreon uh, page that you can support this channel on there's different things that I give like sketchbooks a monthly sketchbook PDF download of the sketches that I did throughout the month and so forth uh, and uh, depending on the tier a high-res image and and also other videos there so listen thank you so much uh, we will be back again next week. I, I don't know exactly what we're going to do, but I know it will be fun. And I definitely will put it up on the community page early on in the week and uh, let you know what uh, we will be doing. Okay? But we will be drawing. So come back for the reference to draw along with us, uh, whether you're drawing in pencil or whether you're drawing in digital media or whether you're painting in gouache, what have you. We will be here to enjoy the time with you, all right? So um, with that, I will see you guys uh, the following week. All right, bye-bye.